So, so Bogatin decides, I got to launder some money. Here's how he did it, or at least some of it. In 1984, David Bogatin, the uh, Rus Russian Jewish mafia agent, walks into a high rise condominium at 721 Fifth Avenue in New York and sits down across the table from the owner of the building a real estate tycoon named Donald J. Trump. Now, this is rather unusual for someone of Trump's status to sit down with, with somebody who's just wanting to buy a, a condo in Trump Tower. But he made an exception for Bogotin, partly because Bogotin wasn't just wanting to buy one condo, he wanted to buy five of these luxury condominiums in the Trump Tower, which, by the way, if you don't know, that's where Donald Trump lives personally. That's where his home is by uh, 2008 values. The purchase that Bogotin was proposing to make, this was $15 million. And if you know Donald Trump, nothing gets Donald Trump's attention faster than either hearing his own name or being offered a big pile of money. Donald Trump has never been one to concern himself with the honesty of his clients. He doesn't care about the source of the money. And, and in fact, that is why at that time in New York, there were only two buildings in all of New York, only two out of hundreds that were willing to facilitate huge purchases to people anonymously using shell companies. So normally when, if you go to do a real estate transaction, most people, you get a mortgage, right? You're going to buy a property. You need a mortgage because you don't have the cash to buy the whole thing. What the lending institution does is say, all right, we'll lend you the money for your mortgage, but we would like to know we have to comply with, with the government regulations. We need to know the source of your money. Is it from income? Is it, you know, where is stocks? Where, where is your money coming from? So the lendee has to disclose this. But if you pay for real estate in full, if you do it with just cash, cold, hard cash, if you do it with, say, a wire transfer from another country, the source of the money doesn't necessarily have to be disclosed. Um, and, and because... You can imagine, naturally, this is very popular among criminal operations to launder money. But that's the very reason why nobody, except for two buildings, nobody in New York would do this thing, would engage in this practice. They didn't want to be associated with mafias and criminal organizations laundering money for them. They actually had a conscience and cared about where the money came from. They didn't want to do business with people that could get them in trouble later on. Donald Trump was different. Donald Trump was one of two exceptions. He not only took money, no questions asked, from this Russian mafia guy, Bogatin, but he did the exact same thing for many other members of the Russian mafia, many other international criminals, including a lot of Saudi uh, criminals. And he talks about that. He talks about this stuff. If people are, all these Trump supporters, how many Trump supporters have actually read Donald Trump's stuff? I mean, gee whiz, you read his book and you realize this guy's a crook. But anyway, I digress. I don't want to jump off there. Stick to the facts. Um, all right, there's a Financial Times uh, pub, uh, article that was published and, and the Financial Times did the research and they said that corrupt Russian oligarchs uh, many of them that are associated with the Jewish this Jewish Russian mafia they have laundered hundreds of billions of dollars through anonymous, anonymous real estate transactions and they do it to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars in money laundering every single year, year after year after year. Donald Trump has not only been willing to accept such transactions from these Russian criminals, but he has actively shopped for them. He has gone out seeking these kinds of contracts. And I'll talk about that in another video. But uh, 
what has happened is Donald Trump has knowingly shielded, and this is again from the Financial Times article, Trump has knowingly shielded over 1,000 condo buyers from being subjected to the this financial scrutiny. He has allowed over 1,000, it's in the neighborhood of 1,300 condominium buyers to purchase properties from his uh, from from the Trump organization with absolute total financial anonymity. And these are not little purchases. These are million, you know, multi-million dollar purchases. Um, Thomas Frank is the name of a guy who is an investigative reporter for BuzzFeed News. And uh, he did a bunch of research, collected the data, published it, that shows that one-fifth of all of Donald Trump's Trump's condominiums in the United States, one-fifth, 20% of them, uh, totaling $1.5 billion in sales, have been sold through this kind of secretive, anonymous cash transaction. And uh, Thomas Frank points out that these sales figures match uh, the official Treasury Department criteria for possible money laundering. And of course, I recognize that myself. I can tell you from experience because I used to work as a professional financial crimes investigator for uh, for a major bank. And so we had the training how to spot money laundering. And I can tell you just listening to these stories uh, or reading this stuff, the odds are extremely high that the majority of this money through these anonymous transactions, that it's dirty money. And as we know, as Trump himself has demonstrated through his recent handling of this Khashoggi murder, he doesn't care about doing financial transactions with the most dark and criminal elements on the planet. He doesn't care what you do. He doesn't care if you're a murderer. So this week, after a group of Republican senators were briefed by uh, the CIA and shown evidence that implicates the Saudi crown prince uh, in the brutal torture and murder and disposal of journalist Jamal Khashoggi, here's what Republican Senator Bob Corker told the press. Quote, this is a Republican. I have no doubt that Mohammed bin Salman ordered the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, monitored the killing, knew exactly what was happening and planned it in advance. If he was in front of a jury, he would be convicted of murder in about 30 minutes. U.S. Republican Senator Marco Rubio said, quote, The evidence leaves you with no doubt that the Crown Prince knew about it and condoned it. Uh, now, not only did Prince Salman order the murder, but it's come out, it's been revealed that he tried to suppress criticism of, of his actions in, in this murder uh, because there were these female activists, these female peace, pro uh, peace activists protesting his murder. So you know what he did? He had his uh, prison guard, he had him arrested, but he had his prison guards subject these women to electroshock, to flogging, and other forms of torture. This guy's awful. Remember, this is the same guy that, that Donald Trump, through Eric Prince, helped to supply former Blackwater mercenaries to, to beat and torture his, his own family members, you know, half-brothers and cousins and, and so forth. This guy's evil. Despite all of the evidence, all of the evidence that Khashoggi, that uh, Salman is guilty, Trump has continued to defend him. Shame on you Trump supporters that stand by Donald Trump as he is defending uh, Crown Prince Salman. Uh, you know, these are mafia guys. Crown Prince Salman is Saudi mafia. At first, remember what Trump said. He was saying, too much criticism of uh, the prince, this could possibly derail the massive $110 billion arms deal that he and Jared had helped to broker. What? You're worried about 
your arms deal. This is what I'm saying about Donald Trump. He will work with anybody. He will work with killers. So later on, though, what Trump told reporters, because, you know, they keep pressing him on this. Here's what he said, quote, maybe Salman did it. Maybe he didn't. We are with Saudi, we're talking about we America. We are with Saudi, Amer uh, Saudi Arabia. We're staying with Saudi Arabia. The United States intends to remain a steadfast partner of Saudi Arabia to ensure the interests of our country and Israel. Making America first, isn't he? In fact, it's been widely reported, and I've mentioned this in the past, uh, in Israeli newspapers. They're excited. They're proud of this fact. They say that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu personally called upon Donald Trump to actively defend the crown prince. Why? Because the crown prince, being the crazy maniac that he is, and also being the defense minister who is running the whole Yemen genocide, uh, this is all integral to the Jewish state's war plans against Iran. They need him. Israel needs a maniac in control of Saudi Arabia. And so they, Netanyahu told Trump, go out there and defend him. And that's what Trump has done. And as with Trump, uh, just as Trump has these long ties uh, with the Russian mafia, so does Netanyahu. He's got long-term ties to the uh, Jewish Russian mafia. So it is deeply disturbing that these two powerful men who have long-standing ties to the Russian mafia are putting their uh, the interests of this you know bloody, brutal Saudi mafia boss ahead of the interests of the people of their own nations, Israel and the United States. And this is not, remember, this is not Trump's only history with a member of the Khashoggi family. Uh, uh, you know, I pointed that out in, in the 1980s. Donald Trump was on David Letterman, and he admitted openly on David Letterman's show that, uh, that he, it was a money laundering scheme is what it was. He bought a multi-million dollar yacht from a known illegal arms trafficker named Adnan Khashoggi. Adnan Khashoggi is the uncle of Jamal Khashoggi that was killed. And Donald Trump bought a yacht from him. Why? Because Adnan Khashoggi, uh, I believe, had uh, purchased one of the Trump, Trump condos, if I'm not mistaken. But Trump had spent time in this guy's home. And like I said, I, th I think that he, I think that it was in the Trump Tower. So anyway, Trump, right there, there's another instance of Donald Trump helping to to launder money for a uh, for a uh, you know notorious arms dealer. And not only have we seen Trump go out there and forcefully defend the Crown Prince, but he has dispatched his own secretaries of uh, state and defense, talking about Pompeo and and Mattis dispatch them to go out and tell the media that the crown prince of crime is innocent, uh, that Mohammed bin Salman is innocent. We saw, and it was shameful, because there is, you know, from time to time you can feel some respect for James Mattis. But to see the Secretary of Defense go out there and publicly claim that there's no smoking gun, uh, this is what I like. Uh, and I, I again, here I am, I'm surprised I'm praising something that Lindsey Graham said, but uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said this, quote, If Pompeo and Mattis were Democrats, I would be all over them for being in the pockets of Saudi Arabia. There isn't a smoking gun here. There's a smoking saw. <laughs> also this past week, the Mueller investigation revealed that while campaigning for the U.S. presidency, the Trump organization offered to give the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, offered to gift to him, free of charge, a $50 million penthouse. Because Trump is trying to build a, uh, a Trump Tower on Moscow. And by giving a free $50 million penthouse to uh, Vladimir Putin, this would also attract... A lot of these uh, these crooked Russian oligarchs, and here's the here's the thing. Here's another connection. A major player in this whole 
Trump Tower thing to give the $50 million penthouse to, to Putin. Major player, Felix Sater. If you don't know the name of Felix Sater yet, give it a little time. You will, because it'll come out. This will be an issue in the, in the Mueller uh, work that's being done. Sater is a Russian Jew who moved to the United States. In 1998, Sater pled guilty to a crime. You know what Felix Sater did? And, and, and by the way, Felix Sater is an advisor to Donald Trump. You know what he did? He pled guilty to helping the Russian mafia orchestrate a $40 million stock fraud scheme. Felix Sater, Russian mafia, admitted Russian mafia, was the go-between between Donald Trump and the Russians in offering a $50 million penthouse to Vladimir Putin. This is not conspiracy theory. This is admitted. And you know who confirmed all of this? Donald Trump's conciliary, Michael Cohen, who was in on it and helping to orchestrate this. Incredible. Incredible. 